This is the finished product of what you'll be learning how to create in this video. These buttons that can control your frames per second of your file allow the user to control it at runtime. So you can go crackhead speed, bionic speed, or normal speed for any animations that you have. Hello, today we are going to demonstrate scripting Runtime Action Script 3.0 Frame Rate Adjustments by accessing the stage object's frame rate property and manipulating it. Basically, it will show you how to script animation speed changes or allow users to adjust the animation speed of your file as it plays at runtime. This functionality was introduced with ActionScript 3, whereas in ActionScript 1 and ActionScript 2 you had to create hacks to accomplish this sort of thing with the tween engine. In order to save time and focus on the lesson subject, we will start with an existing animation I made that simply loops to make it seem like the jogger just keeps running and running. My goal is to place three buttons into the scene and allow viewers to make the character run at a normal jogging speed, then at crackhead speed, and finally bionic speed. So that is what I will do now to my existing animation, and this would work for any animations you have. Okay, so take note that my frames per second of my file is set to 30, and that's the animation that you just saw with the character running. So you saw the speed that is. There it is one more time. I'm going to highlight this layer. I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to name that AS3, short for Action Script 3. I'm going to highlight that layer and press F9 or go up to Window Actions. Then once my scripting pane is open, I'm going to type in stage dot frame rate is equal to let's say something like 90 and you'll see changes right away now what we're doing here is accessing the stage objects frame rate property and making it 90 instead of being 30 which the file is set at so now let's look at it by pressing control enter she's running much faster you can tell and you can set that as high as 120 I think it is is the max now let's take a dynamic text field Actually, let's just get rid of that because I just wanted to show you real quick how to access that functionality. But now let's show you some user interaction and some rendering of these values onto the screen. So let's put a dynamic text field on stage. And up here, let's make sure it's classic text, dynamic text. And I'm going to name it test underscore txt. And I'm going to make sure it's black so I can see the letters in it. And I'm not going to put that on my AS3 layer. I'm going to put it down here with everything else. Now I'm going to make that tell me the frame rate. So type in test underscore txt dot text is equal to stage dot frame rate. And this is how you can tell what the frame rate is. Let's make sure this is lowercase f. And since that's going to be a string and this is going to be a number, we have to put some kind of string characters in here or convert that number to an actual string. But since we're going to say FPS before that number anyway, let's just go FPS colon space. Actually, equal sign makes more sense. So it'll say FPS is equal to whatever the stage frame rate is at runtime. So if I press Control Enter, I should see FPS equals 30. Very good. And now you already know how to manipulate it because I showed you how to change the stage's frame rate. Now what we're going to do is add the user interaction with some buttons. I don't have any buttons on stage yet, but let's say I'm going to put one called BTN1. I'm going to add an event listener to that. It's going to be a mouse event dot click, because when the button is clicked, I want it to change speed. And let's say go bionic. That'll be the function that fires off on click. So I can grab that name and type in the line below function go bionic open close parentheses colon void open the curly brace and go down a couple of lines and close off your curly brace and there's your function nest and let's make sure this says event colon mouse event now I can make the stage frame rate here stage dot frame rate is equal to 120 and that'll be super bionic speed. Now let's make button one. I'm just going to draw a rectangle primitive to stage. Okay, now I'm going to right click that rectangle, convert to symbol, and I'm going to make this a button symbol. And I can name it BTN1 in the library, it doesn't matter. But here in the instance name, I want to give that BTN1. 
make sure that's what it's named in the code so I don't get any errors. BTN1. Perfect. So when that button's clicked, right now if I run it, she should go bionic speed. So let's see if that works. Yep. Okay. So there you have it. Now let me put in three more or two more buttons. I really will change those around. We'll make BTN1 normal, BTN2 crackhead, or whatever. Let's go back into the code. So let's say BTN1 is going to be go normal. So let's change that function name here. And let's make it go 30 frames per second. That's normal speed. Now button 2 is going to go 60. And button 3 is going to go 120. 120, go bionic. Make sure that says go bionic as the function name. And this is button 3. This is button 2. And this is going to be go crackhead. Make sure this function name says go crackhead here. This is going to be 60 frames per second. And we want to make sure that every time we click one of those buttons, the test text changes to show what the new frame rate is to the viewer as they press things. So there you go. Uh, this needs to be button 2. There we go. So this is go crackhead speed. And this is go bionic speed. And you can see the FPS changes in the text field here. Okay, and finally, this is all three buttons set up with their labels and everything. So you got normal speed, crackhead speed, and then bionic speed. And you can go back down to other speeds. So that's how you can dynamically at runtime change the frames per second or the speed of your animations and allow the viewer to change it.